Hello and welcome back to me getting hit by bugs. So this is the bonus part of Daxter. There are two of them. There's this and bug combat. Uh, this is basically me getting all the masks that uh, are hidden throughout the game. Um, basically that. Um, getting also just showing off uh, like one or two secret areas that I didn't show off the first time. Like the hotel I couldn't get here first time so I thought I'd show it off. Um, but also... Uh, getting gold on all the mini games, which are being cut down because they go on way too long. Um, and just all the secret menu stuff. So yeah, there's a lot in this game in terms of secrets. Uh, there are two things I couldn't get. Um, one is basically a modified scooter. If you have 100% in Jack X and connect a Daxter with it, um, your scooter basically becomes pimped up um, and has a different paint job and flames and stuff. Um, on the decals, um, and there's also the goggles that he wears in Jack, Jack X, um, and, uh, yeah, you have to connect to, da uh, to Jack X to unlock that, but it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, pretty, pretty cool, there's a lot that you can, you can do with it, and, uh, that was impressive, I think, for, for me, I, I like it a lot, um, but you can connect, and that explains some of the stuff that I didn't have in the menu, uh, but here we have, uh, Daxter is a human, which looks super derpy. Um, yeah, next one is uh, the transit system. So you may remember this section, you climb along the, uh, I guess, the netting area, and you can get killed in one hit by stuff. Um, it's I thought it was going to be on the right of here. It's not. It's the left of here. Um, and there it is. You just drop down. It's uh, quite simple to find, but it's well hidden, so yeah, you, if you didn't recognize it already, you should now. It's just this area, just above it. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty cool. It's quite a cool, uh, cool well hidden secret. That's the thing, that, uh, all of the secrets in this game are actually very well hidden. And I really like it. Um, but, yeah. Let's see, what one is this one? Oh god, the smile on Ratchet's face is scary. I, I don't like that. <laughs> I don't know what it is about it. I just do not like it. Uh, next is in the uh, the lumber mill. Um, yeah, this is actually... Uh, it's actually probably one of the easier to find ones. But it's... It's... Yeah, no, it's it's still well hidden. Like, that's the thing. It's, it's kind of easy to spot, I guess. Um, but I didn't. So... But yeah, you just go here and... Ta-da! Yeah, I, fun fact, I spent ages looking around for it and just couldn't find it for a, for a long time. <laughs> and this one is, oh god, so, ah, oh, it's so weird. Why these are scattered around, we may never know, but the final mask would be behind the Emerald Isle uh, gate. You just don't go into it. I'm actually surprised I didn't explore this area, to be honest. Like... This is the kind of thing I, like, I think I did that with every other level. Like, oh, there's a gate, there's something behind it. Nah, there's not, never mind. The one level I didn't try that is here, and there it is. So, yeah, we got uh, we got the final mask, which is uh, pretty cool. And that's, I believe, Sly. Yeah, there you go, Sly mask. Yeah, I thought at first the, um, the gaps missing on the menu was gonna... Jeez, that's creepy. Uh, <laughs> I thought it was gonna be because, like, there are other masks for the cheat website didn't list. Oh, this glitch! Like, what the hell did I do? <laughs> uh, it's just really funny. Um, but yeah, I thought there was something that I, uh... That I missed. Um, but no, it's just, uh, there are only six. So... Or oh, was it five? Anyway, yeah. Yeah, no, it's six, because there's the, uh... It was, uh... Yeah, in the other levels. Yeah, yeah. In the, uh, tanker and, uh, the f prison. So, yeah. Got them all, which is cool. I'm so glad I got the one in the prison. Like, my god. That would have sucked having to play through that again. But, uh... Yeah, I guess, uh... Before we, uh, show off the secrets, where it's an E3 trailer, um... Like, artwork... Um, the the first cutscene as a like recreation, like showing it through stages, uh, which is really cool. I like that. Um, a behind the scenes, and uh, I think 3D character model kind of 
uh, thing. Yeah, as you can see, I've skipped already. Because uh, it takes a while. It's It takes a long time to get to this point. And then it just gets super difficult around this point. I'm like, right, I'm going to get to 120. I'm going to make sure I get to 120. Do I get to 120? Nah. <laughs> no, I do not. The, the phase just before 120 really just picks it up a bit. You'll see what I mean. Like, the fact that it just got covered by another one, I'm just like, um, what? <laughs> but yeah, we still, we fell asleep on the floor. That's fun times. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, I only got 800 uh, precursor orbs, and I did take two of the uh, stuff from YouTube. So the final one, the quality isn't as good as this one is. But it's there, and that's what I think is important. Uh, so, yeah. But these are... Uh, this one I show for a while just because I'm strangely proud of how this went. <laughs> You'll see why. So I think the target for this was 200, which is actually quite a high number, but trust me it's not. It doesn't take long to get to 200 at all. Um, of course I do skip parts, but it really doesn't take long. It's a very quick mini game, which is helpful. So yeah, we're already at 194 because I skipped 180, but that's not the point. But there you go, done. But see, like, it's... The thing I like about this is you can see it way before it actually happens. Like, and because you don't have to move from side to side or anything, you can easily react to it. Like, it's super easy to react. Yeah, you'll fumble every now and again, but it's still super easy, in my opinion. But, uh, yeah, no, it went very well, I think. Yeah, some of these definitely did give me trouble, and some of them definitely went on too long. My god, they went on too long. But, like, I, I keep a fair amount of them in, just in case you, you want to see a decent amount of it. Because you might, and that's fine if you do. Um, but if you don't, cool. <laughs> um... But yeah, so I guess I'll talk about the game as a whole because I I really enjoyed this game. I thought it was a lot of fun. It was it was a nice tie-in, and just it was yeah it was just a good time. Um, and I really just yeah it, yeah it was just a good time. I will admit that I have recorded the combat bug video already. Um, this is the last thing I'm recording for it, but. Trust me, it's so cool. <laughs> like, at first, like, for the first seven minutes, it's just me trying to react to it, trying to work out what the hell's going on, because I don't have a manual, I don't know what, how exactly it works. Like, I'm, I'm just trying to work it out, like, what, what does everything do? And then, like, I guess, like, seven minutes in or so, it just clicks. I'm like, this is so cool. <laughs> like, it's basically a glorified rock, paper, scissors game, but it's so fun. Like, it really is. It's so clever. I, I don't know if it's something that's been recreated before in another in another game, and this is just trying to mimic someone else's version of it. But I I love it. It's great. It's so cool. So I think you're in for a treat. And yeah, that was when things started to go wrong. I screwed up twice. So right now I'm not actually listening to the game audio. I'm listening to uh, a different song. Uh, let me, let me, let me re recite its name. Uh, you might, and uh, by the way, this is a hint to the next Let's Play, and I will tell you what it is in a second. Uh, you might be able to figure it out just from the name of this song. It's called Fly Me to the Moon Climax Mix. So, yeah. The music in this game is godly. Also, I totally doubled the uh, score we needed. But yeah, the, the music in this game is, oh, so good. This is my next Let's Play, Bayonetta. I haven't played Bayonetta before. I will say that now. I have played, okay, I've played a bit. I've played two 
two and a half chapters on a stream, but that was like a year ago. In fact, I think it was now, but actually now that I think of it, seriously, it was before I got it for my, uh, before I got Bayonetta 1 and 2 for my birthday on the Wii U. So yeah, it was over a year ago. I, I remember nothing <laughs> like, at all. No, I remember the, the intro level because it was really memorable to me. I remember the gameplay. I don't remember what all the combos are, but I remember the gameplay itself quite well. And Bayonetta is something that Deadpool bought me uh, for Christmas. Um, and Bayonetta 2 as well. And Bayonetta 2 is something I've always wanted to let's play. But I didn't want to do it until I'd done Bayonetta 1. And since... I, like, I was just thinking, what do I feel like playing? Like, I mean, there's, there's Ratchet, there's Jack X, there's loads of stuff on the list. There's loads of stuff that you guys suggested to me um, through Spyro at one point. And I was just like, hmm, what could I do here? And I, I just, I just, like, the word Bayonetta just popped into my mind out of nowhere. I hadn't thought about it for months. I was like, oh, that's it. That's the game. <laughs> like, I, I don't know what I'm in for. I'm gonna, even though I have played the first two chapters, I'm gonna put Blind Run in the title. Because it is, it's blind. I don't know what to expect. I don't remember what the hell goes on. Um, but yeah, no, I just... It's something I was thinking, yeah, no, this could be a lot of fun. Um, so, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna... I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do Bayonetta. Bayonetta... Bayonetta 1, and then if you guys really enjoy Bayonetta 2, probably not necessarily immediately after it, but pretty soon after. Because I'm excited for it. I'm really excited. I, I have heard nothing but incredible things about Bayonetta 2. Like, that's 9.5 and 10s everywhere. You, 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 you'd find it... You, it's hard to find anything lower than that. It's... Scores are insane. Beno 1 not as high, it's normally 9, 8.5 to 9, um, but at the same same time, 9 is very good, <laughs> 9 is super good, and I, I think I'm always much fairer on games than, review, than most reviewers are, like the, the big, big, big names like IGN 1, I find I'm always much fairer to games, uh, so I think like, whatever you see from them, bump mine up by 0.5 or maybe even 1, um, unless it's Pokemon. Uh, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, then they just they just mark it 7.8 for reasons. Uh, but yeah, I, I I think this is gonna be one of those games. Where I'm like, this is pretty much perfect. I think like the thing I had a problem with when streaming it was when I streamed it, I wasn't used to how the game felt, and I was I was also very tired around that time. I don't remember specifically when it was, but yeah, I was just. It was just, you know, it was a time when I, I was very tired around that point, and, uh, like, streaming things for a long period of time. I think I'd streamed some other stuff before, and then Bayonetta for, like, two hours or so, so I was exhausted by the end. And it was more like, yeah, I just want to end this game right now. But this time, I won't be tired. I'll be doing it on a day when I have loads of energy, and I'm ready to play it, and I'm excited for it, and just, you know, all that stuff. And that's, that's... I'm super excited for it. I really am, because I know what it's like to play. I, I just have this mental image of what I enjoyed about it, and I, I'm listening to the music now, and it's freaking glorious. And it's just, yeah, I'm just, I'm super excited. I really am. I'm looking forward to let's playing this. And I hope you guys are too. Um, but there, there's also a lot of other stuff that's going on. I've got a, uh, got some new games. I've actually got a horror game for Halloween. Um, it's a new horror game, um, and it will be uploaded on October 30th, and probably 31st, and probably November 1st, um, but, uh, so I doubt I'll be able to get it all up in time, but, uh, it's called Project Zero in Europe, but for the rest of the world, you may know it as Fatal Frame. It's the new Fatal Frame game, and I am super excited for it, and it's gonna be... Teal and Dino's Halloween Spectacular Spooky Time. That's not its real name. But no, it's going to be that. It's going to be a lot of fun. And yeah, no, there's still new games to do and there's reviews that I'm going to be working on. Like, I'm going to be working on reviews for newer games as well as, uh, as well as you know, top 10 lists and reviews for older games. And I've got loads of ideas coming. I've, like, I want to work a lot more on this kind of thing. It's, it's a lot of fun. And just, I want to build up that. 
the hype, I guess, for uh, for just new stuff. But uh, yeah, here you go. Here's the final mini game, and then I'll show you what you unlock uh, for them. Because there are some cool things, and then for very odd things, <laughs> I don't really know what they do, if I'm being honest. Yeah, that was a good start. That, I think that's like the only time I screw up as well. But uh, this, this is by far the worst one. Because the others, like, they may go on a while and they have big numbers. But the speed at which you get numbers just makes it s seem to be going by quicker than maybe it actually is. This, however, I'm pretty sure I spent 10 minutes on. Po probably more. Like, no exaggeration. Because just... Ah, oh, man. It, ju it went on forever. It really did. You have to get, I want to say, 22. That might be too much. 22 seems too much. Maybe it's 18. I think. Maybe it is 18. Still, that's a big number considering you're getting a number each, like, 30 seconds, if not longer. Like, this is just a minigame that doesn't end. <laughs> I think I get to about four and I'm like, yeah, skip. <laughs> skip that. Nothing is worth this. I think the last one's actually super kind to me as well. There's no of the turning ones, so I'm like, oh, that's nice. Because, like, I, you get used to the turning ones uh, quite quickly, but it's still, like, the, oh, I might screw it up. I don't want to screw it up. And then you don't screw it up. So, yay. <laughs> yay me. Yeah, it's 18. So, yeah, it just still, it just doesn't end like, and when you get to this point, he does like seven patterns of attacks. Just, it doesn't end. <laughs> it just, I'm just like, okay, it's got to end at, it's got to end at like 12, okay? Maybe it's going to 15. Oh no, it's not over. <laughs> One to go. At this point, I was just like, end, end, please. People are messaging me on Skype and I want to speak to them, please, end. <laughs> that was pretty much the mentality of it, really. But yeah, no, I seriously, no, I did, I did enjoy this game. It was a blast to go back and play it again. It's something I've wanted to do for a while. Um, and it's just, it's so cool. It is a shame that the Vita is pretty much a dead console. It really is a shame, because the Vita is really good and has a lot of potential. It's just, it was wasted. It's all Sony's fault, really. They they didn't give it the love and care that it needed, and they didn't, they, they promoted the features that practically no one cares about, as opposed to the features that everyone cares about. And that was the problem, I think. Like, there are people who care about the features they mention, and that's a great thing. But they focused on it, as opposed to focusing on what we really wanted out of it. And it's just... It's a shame. But... The Vita is still having games made for it from other companies, and as long as that remains, and those companies make good things, then that sort of matters, really, I think. Um, and the thing I like as well is I'm playing this on a PlayStation TV. Also, it was previously known as a Vita TV. You play Vita games and PSP games. Anything that's available on the PlayStation Store, you can download. There's a lot of PSP games, a lot of Vita games, obviously. It all works for it. So that's that's what I like. But yeah, the extras you get are the pants from Jack Free, um, the uh, Indiana Jones hat, which I wasn't a fan of, and these website clues. I I'm not sure what they were for, to be honest, but. They were clues, presumably for for the website, for Daxter, and they had stuff. And yeah, those two, I don't know what they do. It's probably the Jack X connectivity thing, but I could be wrong. But 
yeah, I think with that said, that's everything. That's everything this game has to offer and everything I can produce. So, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this series as much as I did. And, yeah, next time there's the bug combat. But before then, we've got the extras that this game provides um, throughout all the menus after getting precursor orbs. So, enjoy. See you later. Bye-bye. In the great struggle of good versus evil, there is often more to a hero than meets the eye. Just as the plants have their hidden roots, and rocks, when turned over, reveal their dark underbelly with all manner of surprises, so too is the great story of Jack and his epic fight to save Haven City. Every mother's child has heard the story well. But most have heard only half the tale. For as great as Jack was, he would never have succeeded without his often forgotten but faithful sidekick, Daxter. In my many years as a sage, and trust me, it's a big number, I've learned one very important truth. Behind every great hero, there is always a wise-cracking, obnoxious nincompoop! This is his story. I can't do this anymore. It's too dangerous. But 
But please, don't leave now. Forget it! Find another crazy sucker, okay? Oh. The rat. The Baron wants him. Don't worry, Jack. I'll save you before you know it. What was that? Where'd he go? Huh? Where'd who go? My little crazy orange. Whatever he is, I'll show him. And there I was, toe to toe, with five, uh, fifty-five of the nastiest lurkers you ever saw. Suddenly they came at me from the left, so I moved to the right with a chop and a kick and a. <laughs> Wait, come back! I, I've got more. Uh, after I fell down to uh, confuse the lurkers, I then. Oh. Can you speak up, son? My well, ears aren't what they used to be. Tell us the one about how you can knock guard silly with a single blow. What, I can? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Those guards don't stand a chance against the old one, too. Yes, I'm pleased to meet you also. I'm Osmo, proprietor and chief spray technologist for the Quitter Ritter Extermination Company. Let me get right to brass tacks, young man. I need someone like you. Someone with your ingenuity. That's me. Someone with your strength. That's right. Your resourcefulness. Yep, got it. Your bravery in the face of certain death. What? Okay, move along, old man. You had me at hello, but you had to push it. In short, would you like a job working for me? I'll make it worth your while. Forget it, buddy. I don't know nothing about exterminating, and I hate bugs. Although, I could always fake it. Hey, what? You take it. Wonderful. Meet me at the shop tomorrow. And welcome, welcome aboard.
famous icons, at least in his mind, of the video gaming world is finally getting his own game on the PSP system. And it's about time. Okay, baby, I'll play along. Ever since the, um, the first um, Jack and Dexter game, actually, people have been wanting to play Dexter and to play as Dexter. He's, in my mind, the best character uh, in the series. I mean, Dexter was this fantastic character. And he kind of had to ride around on Jack's shoulder for an awful long time. And now he sort of gets to take center stage. Just give me the fun juice, Pops, and make it a double. I'll hose down every creepy crawly that moves. Daxter is definitely a wiseacre. It was always kind of a contrast with Jack, who's more serious. Daxter's more crazy and fun-loving. And that's how the Daxter PSP is built. It takes extra artistic effort to create a new and improved version of a familiar character, even if that character sees himself as pretty perfect already. Everything with more than two legs start trembling, because the Daxterator is in the building. I wanted to bring in a little more flavor because we needed Daxter to be on his own, to look great on his own now that he's without Jack. For example, we added a fur on Daxter, which was one of the great things that actually brought you know, Daxter to a different level. Daxter for PSP finds our intrepid hero on a search and rescue mission. After Jack was imprisoned at the end of the first installment of the Precursor Trilogy, Daxter spent most of his time planning an escape for his heroic partner, mostly in bars. But now it's time to take action. Besides, he had to rescue him in time for Jack, too. Jack! Hang on, buddy! The story in that game is what happens in the last week or so of Daxter going to save Jack, which is the first thing we see in Jack 2. Well, the first problem that Daxter has is uh, he needs a job. He is out of money. He's not really a very focused individual in a lot of ways. So he ends up scoring a job as a bug exterminator. As you follow Daxter on the job, some familiar and not so familiar faces pop up in all sorts of locations in this full-size platformer. The characters in the Daxter PSP game are mostly new. So there's Osmo, who is Daxter's boss. Another extermination company. Let me get right to brass tacks, young man. I need someone like you. Someone with your ingenuity. That's me. And there's Taryn, who's kind of his competition, but also his love interest, and you know how that goes. And you're too scruffy to be a creeper. So, what's your game? I could ask you to say, sweet cheeks. And also, a really fun character in the game is uh, Simon, who's Osmo's son, who's a dude. Thanks, dude. Welcome to... Dude! Dude! To develop Daxter, we actually used uh, just as much resources as any PlayStation 2 title. The game uh, in total has close to 20 levels. You get to go to uh, places like the brewery uh, and all these places around the city that you didn't get to see um, uh, uh, in the Jack games. You basically get you know, the, the, the story, the cutscenes, all the high quality animation, the high production values, all in a handheld game and all in, in a smaller package but without any compromises whatsoever. As Daxter ventures and battles through this world, check out his cool new moves and even cooler weapons and combo attacks. There are two things about Daxter that we really wanted to emphasize in how he moves and how you control him. We made sure that Daxter can get down on four feet and sneak past enemies, or he can climb walls on four feet. The second thing is Daxter's kind of crazy, and so the moves that he does have to have a certain amount of craziness to it. They, they, he gets really enthusiastic. Lest Dax forget, the main mission is to save Jack, but it's so easy to get sidetracked. There are precursor orbs and skull gems to collect, secrets to discover, and levels to unlock. And at long last, Daxter rules the world. In his dreams, we created some really, really challenging and neat minigames based on the idea of Daxter taking a nap and dreaming that he's something fantastic. Well, the dream levels were, was a chance for Daxter to fall asleep and become the hero he'd never been. I know Kung Fu! As Daxter will tell you, small things come in great packages. Uh, no, it's great things come in small packages. Anyway, this is a great game for the PSP. Daxter is really the first game on the PSP that gives you a full-blown action platform game experience on a handheld. 
It was a huge undertaking. I think it was it was greater than we ever imagined it was going to be. It's been our whole life, pretty much, for two years with every guy in, in this place. Has poured everything he had into into this game. Um, Dexter is going to be, you know, a really big milestone on, on PSP to show what the platform really can do and on it. And I think it's going to surprise people. I mean, it's a blast. It's been a blast to develop a game for Daxter because he's such a fantastic character. And it'll be a blast to play it as well.